everybody. Welcome to the Fired Up with CJ show. We are on segment three, talking to Jim Tam about his book, Radical Collaboration, Five Essential Skills to Overcome Defensiveness and Build Successful Relationships. So we talked about the, um, in the first segment, we talked about the five skills, um, collaborative intention, openness, self-accountability, self-awareness, negotiating and problem solving. And in the second segment, we talked a lot about um, um, collaboration and how to create a safe environment and like some of the complexities that I've seen that are very common and even how to language because sometimes people are like okay great that's great I know this is a skill but how do I now become this when I'm at work show me what to say Jim so I know what to do demonstrate so we did a little bit of that um, and then we talked about the complexities of being a manager in the modern world which is extremely complex because the world is so um, complex. Um, now I want to talk about defensiveness. So you had said that you were talking about self-awareness and you said if there was one thing that someone could, you know, get the biggest bang for their buck, which caught my attention, it was be defensiveness. So I want to talk about, and, and even in the demonstration, I was like, oh, I'm feeling defensive. Like I have to defend my position. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's interesting. My, my background previous to doing this is at um, high, a high tech company, and I was in um, a business role in a high tech company. It, I was actually at Microsoft, and and okay. and and all you would be doing is in these meetings is like flexing your intelligence and like how smart am I? My ideas will rule the world, you know. And um, as a result of that, I just recently discovered um, that there were these three things that you've talked about in this in this leadership model of one is that either you're trying to be the smartest best you know smartest on top of knowledgeable kind of person which i see a lot with attorneys so i'm sure you can relate to this jim um and then the second is this competitive kind of like i'm going to take you down if we're going to be in an intellectual battle and this is what you described in the um in, in of the different red zone styles the 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 style of wanting to defend and pro, you know instead of problem solving you just need to be right and be the best that competitive and the third which is like all right whatever like i just i don't want to even listen to this anymore because you're clearly not listening to me so I'm checking out. I was just nod my head, but like I'm I'm checking out, which is the conflict avoidant or the yeah. avoidant part. So what is defensiveness? And give me a couple of, you know, my example, I was like, okay, I have to be, you know, I really do have a valid point. And it was not even my, I made up a story. <laughs> I was feeling like I already had to defend, defend my position that it we need to reduce quality standards that we were using in the second scenario. And I felt like Okay, I'm going to convince you. <laughs> so what what is that and how can we what is that what does it look like from your perspective and how do we kind of work with ourselves at the moment? Sure. Let, uh, so let me back up just a little okay. bit. Mm -hmm. I, I was a judge for almost 25 years dealing with employment disputes. Mm -hmm. I almost never had to deal with pure legal issues. Mm. People were almost always before me because somebody would start feeling vulnerable and then they would get defensive. Mm. And when we get defensive, our thinking becomes rigid, our IQ drops about 20 points and we simply <laughs> become stupid. And not only are we terrible at problem solving, but we tend, when we get defensive, we tend to invite everybody else in the room to get defensive. And then what you end up with is a whole room filled with defensive people who can't solve a problem. Mm. And, you know, in my background, the, the technical term for that is litigation, which is very expensive. Right. So uh, what, I'm, what we try to do now is we try to get people to get a better understanding of what's going on when we get defensive. Mm -hmm. See, most people think that when we get defensive, it's because somebody has done something to us and we need to defend ourselves from that person. Mm -hmm. But that's not what's going on when we get defensive. When we're getting defensive, we are defending ourselves from fears inside of us that we don't want to feel. And so mm -hmm. we behave in a certain way that lets us stay unaware of those fears. Mm -hmm. Three big fears that come up all the time are fears about our own significance, our competence, and our likability. Mm -hmm. Significance, competence, and likability, they show up all the time. Competence. 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 Yeah. Let me give you an example. 
say, say I have some concerns or fears about my own competency for doing this interview today. Say I haven't done an interview for a long time. I've been traveling. I was up all night and I'm, you know, jet lagged and I'm forgetting things and saying stupid things, you know, that could cause me a lot of discomfort. Mm. So one of the ways that I could reduce the level of discomfort that I'm feeling because of my own fear about my own competency is I might start blaming you. I mean, after all, you know, this is not the smartest group I've ever worked with, you know, and you're not asking the right questions and I didn't have enough time. And, you know, you should have given me the questions ahead of time. And Mm -hmm. I come up with all sorts of Mm. of excuses why it's not my fault. Mm. Okay. So, uh, What's really going on, though, is we are behaving in a way that is unconscious to us. Mm. Uh, Most of us are not aware of the fear inside of us because the whole point of a defense system is to help us not feel that fear. Mm -hmm. So what can be more helpful to most of us is if we start paying attention to our outward behaviors because these outward signs of defensiveness are usually easier to spot at an earlier point in the process before it's too late before mm. we're, we're doing the damage you know right so, and how, how do i spot this what does it look well, like yeah so it, it's going to look different for everybody but we have we have a list of uh 50 different signs of, of defensiveness <laughs> wow uh, I, i'll give you an example of some of them like loss of humor, high charge of energy in the body, sudden drop in IQ, that's one of my favorites, flooding with information to prove a point, withdrawal Mm -hmm. into deadly silence, another one of mine, Mm -hmm. blaming or shaming, trivializing with humor, mind reading, magnifying everything, minimizing everything. Mm -hmm. So they look different for each person. Mm -hmm. For me, I've noticed that when I start getting defensive, uh, I tend to be breathing faster. Mm -hmm. I speak faster. I probably start talking louder. Mm. Uh, I tend to feel misunderstood. Mm-hmm. So if I'm working with a group and all of a sudden, I, you know, I'm getting some feedback and all of a sudden I notice that I'm breathing faster and talking louder, you know, the alarm bells can go off. Ding, ding, ding. You know, Jim, pay attention. You're doing that thing. Mm. You're getting defensive. Then I can take some action. Mm-hmm. So the first step is to understand what your own signs of defensiveness are. Mm, What are your triggers or what does it look like? What what are your tells? (laughs) Yeah, that's right. What are your tells? And so, you know, if, if you can't think of what they might be, go ask your spouse or another family (laughs) member or your colleague, because usually they can spot your defensiveness a lot sooner than we can. So you you get a, a better sense of uh, what can what you're doing, and that can be your own personalized early warning system. So when you see that, for example, how did you know that you were getting defensive when we were doing that role playing? You know, because I actually on? physically I could feel my energy amping up, like I was getting ready to fight you. Like yeah. okay. no offense, I'm, I'm just telling you, getting real. No. It's like, and it's not even my issue, but I'm like, no. I have to be right here. <laughs> why is jim why does jim not like so, like so there's like a dialogue in my head yeah and i and could feel my chest your shoulders, pumping your shoulders up. Yeah. were going up like this too yeah when you're doing that okay yeah i was like so, okay jim here's why <laughs> so if you know if you know that that's one of your tells mm-hmm. all right anytime you feel your shoulders going up like that you know that can be your early warning system yeah So that's important that you understand what it looks like when you're getting defensive, what the kind, what it feels like inside your body. What are the kinds of things that you say when you're getting defensive? And then you start, you've been, then you're on the lookout for those behaviors. Right. Then when you see them, then what can you do about it? Well, first of all, you have to acknowledge to yourself that you're getting defensive. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, that may not seem like it's a big deal, but it's a huge first step because if you don't notice that, you won't take any other action. You will right. remain blissfully ignorant and ineffective, you know, because anytime you get defensive, you're becoming less effective. Right. My IQ is dropping by the moment. That's right. That's right. So first of all, you notice it, right? Mm-hmm. Then you start paying attention to what your signs are and you come up with an action plan. Mm-hmm. 
so you go through a sequence. Notice it. Try to calm yourself. To slow down. Uh, and there's a few different ways you can do that. You know, there's, there's a strong tie in between physiological issues and biological issues and their defensiveness. So if you can slow down your physiology, take a few deep breaths, you know, get a meditative picture in your own mind, something along those lines, you know. So you slow down. Then when we start getting defensive, part of our brain, our prefrontal cortex, tends to get tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. And we tend to obsess about some, you know, minor issue that feels huge at the time. So you want to re-engage your brain. Mm -hmm. So you might look around the room and see how many different colors you can see in the room or start paying attention to how many different sounds you can hear. And that's just a little trick to, you know, get your brain to open up again, right? Then uh, what you can do then is think, all right, I'm doing my defensiveness. Now I need to implement this action plan that I've come up with. Your action plan is going to depend on your sign. So if your sign is flooding with information to prove a point, maybe your action plan is just to be quiet for 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now that's not going to help you if your sign is withdrawal into deadly silence. You know, then you need to speak up, do something to stay engaged in the conversation. If it's high charge of energy, maybe you take three deep breaths, you know, or you take a walk around the building and get some air. If it's um, uh, always wanting the last word. A woman in one of the, the workshops we had, she got it. She was very visual, so she got an image of herself standing at the conference room door, throwing in the last word and then slamming the door. <laughs> a way of just you know, and she and she made it even funnier. She when she pictured herself, she had a clown nose and clown feet, and it just it not only showed her what she was doing, but it lightened up her mood enough that she could get through it. You know. So there's a lot of different things that, that you can do, whether it's something you say to yourself, something you say to the other person, an action, a physical action that you take. It could be an image. For example, one of my signs is uh, all or nothing thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, I tend to, when I get defensive, I tend to see things in black or white. Mm -hmm. So when I start feeling myself polarized that way, I try to see a sentence like on Times Square. It says, look for the gray. Just to mm. remind me that it doesn't have to be all or nothing, black or white. Mm. Mm. Little ground there, you know. Mm. Mm. So you come up with your action step, uh, and then you try to implement that. Mm -hmm. Then, as sort of an after-action review, you go back and you try to see if you can figure out what the underlying fear was. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I wasn't feeling smart enough. Maybe mm -hmm. I was feeling at risk because I didn't have all the information I needed, or maybe mm -hmm. I, I didn't think people liked me, mm -hmm. or you know that I wasn't important. I, whatever it might be, you go back, try and figure out what the fear is, and then try to dig down in that fear and see where that fear came from and whether it's still accurate. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we have these phantom fears, you know, that are hanging out, hanging around us, because of things that happened much earlier. In our lives yeah that's what i'm saying it's very psychological like the kinds yeah. of work that we're now asked to do i mean 1950s jim would not have to think about what are my unconscious programming from my youth that is forcing me to be defensive yeah. and feeling unliked you know it's like my 1950s CJ didn't have to think about any of that. But, but now you, know, you have we, to go back and think about this. We all have we all have a 1950s, even if we were you know born in the 60s. But yeah. uh, it's it's the history and our defensive behaviors. Oftentimes, are behaviors that we learned and perfected at an earlier point in our life. Yes. Uh, to help us deal with situations that we couldn't cope with at the time mm -hmm. before we had as much choice as we have now. But let me give you an example. If you're a little kid and your parents are fighting all the time, this can be really scary for a little kid, you know, to have this specter of violence out there, right? So a strategy that could be really helpful for that little kid is just to turn all that fighting into gray noise. It's just background noise back there. Mm -hmm. right? That was a wonderful shelter for that little kid in a mm. bad situation. 
But if that kid takes that same strategy into their adult life, it is a horrible strategy. Because then what it means is anytime they get into a conflict situation, they become a lousy listener. Like, ah, la, 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> because what helped them as a kid undermines them as an adult. Mm, yeah, that's so, a really good way of putting it. I get it. Yeah. But you so have to do work. Like this requires work. Like now I'm like, what is my psychotherapist phone number? So like, <laughs> where did this come from? It's my parents who used to fight and then I'd go into a gray zone. And then you're like, you know, you're like, wait a second, I haven't been listening to this person for this whole time because <laughs> I've noticed what I've, I've noticed my shoulders. I got defensive. I started breathing. And the person told me like 10 minutes later, I'm like back, like, now, what did you say? <laughs> Come through so, my own single drop. <laughs> so it can be, it can be overwhelming and complex and all that kind of stuff. All right. However, if you keep it simple, you know, you just notice, all right, I'm triggered. Right, what's the trigger about? Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? Okay, set that aside for now. <laughs> okay, I know I want to do that. Put it in a box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come back to it later on. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm going to be paying attention to what's going on here. Yeah. So it has to be like an instantaneous. You know, I've actually, I'm, I'm partially joking because, you know, after you've done this, I'll, here's what I'll say: if, if yeah. your reaction was this one that I had just had is after you do this over and over again, I had an um, interview and I was stuck in traffic. I was in an awful mood. I had a, a, an incredible headache and I had to do an interview. And so I said, hold on a second. I'm like, how are you? And this person was all about stress management. So he could tell I was completely overwhelmed with stress. And I said, just give me a second to get grounded. And then I was like, then performed, you know, you just, yeah you learn how to do this. So if, if this all sounds overwhelming, if you, once you travel this circuit over and over again, it ends up being like literally, and he said, oh, you've done this before. I'm like, how do you know? And he said, because it took you five seconds to move from a stress point to a calm space. So you get, you get better at doing this and yeah. it translates into your relationships at home, as and, you're saying. And even if you can't do it in the moment, yeah. if you go back after you're out of that, that situation, you know, and you just do it in your mind, you know, you go through it, you rehearse it, pretend like it's real, even though it's not in the moment, you'll be creating new neural pathways up there that make yeah. it easier for you to do it the, the next time it comes up. You know, so. I know we've run over. Do we have time for one more question? Sure. Okay. So the, the last question is, okay, now you're the manager. And so yeah. your gym, you see CJ getting defensive. Well, yeah. I didn't, I told the person, you know, like whatever my set of defensiveness, <laughs> what are things that you could do, you know, to kind of like, okay, clearly this person is triggered. How do I calm them down? What are some things that you have found successful with managers to help when you see someone in this defensive position? Yeah. Uh, uh, first, let me talk about what is not helpful. Okay. <laughs> probably, probably the least helpful thing that you can do is point out to that person that they're getting defensive. Okay. You know, if you've ever been feeling defensive and someone says, wow, you're getting kind of defensive, you know how unhelpful that is. Yeah. It's like pouring gasoline on a fire. Yeah. So <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. The most exactly. helpful thing that you can do is for you not to get triggered. Mm -hmm. Because if the employee is getting defensive and then the boss gets defensive, you just have a meltdown. It's not going to work. So the boss needs to say, stay centered and not take it personally. Know that that person is going through something difficult at that time, mm. right? And try to create a safer environment, particularly by listening better. You know, using all of those active listening skills that we've all been taught and most of us ignore, you know, Summarize what you're hearing, feed it back, check for understanding, reassure the person you really want to hear what's going on. You know, tell me more about what your thinking is. You know, well, what do you think the solution might be? You know, well, how does that feel to you? How would this feel to you? You know, help, help me better understand where you're coming from. This is really important to me. All those kinds of, mm. of comments. Mm. You know? Yeah. And, and then uh, the next thing, and I think, you know, one of the more important things once you can stay centered, uh, is to focus on the underlying interests of mm -hmm. everybody anytime you have any differences. So like 
the, this whole, remember I, I said the fifth skill is negotiating. Mm -hmm. And the difference there between the way most people negotiate, which is try to figure out the problem from my point of view, I come up with my favorite solution. <laughs> I go to you and I try to convince you that my favorite solution is better than your favorite solution. Right. So set that aside and instead try to understand, put your energy, instead of trying to find solutions, put your energy into trying to understand all of the underlying interests. Mm -hmm. there. That's a good so idea. If I can start feeding back to you what I believe your interests are, mm -hmm. you know, why you're doing mm -hmm. this, what you, what you need to happen, all those kinds mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm and then check that for understanding. Uh, and that doesn't mean I agree with you, but at least I understand it. I ought to be, as a manager, I ought to be able to articulate what your point of view is to your satisfaction. Right, I Even understand. If I disagree with you. Yeah, you and, know when- that, my, was, <laughs> that was a tool that I would use in mediation all the time. I would, you know, in a labor management situation, I, I would say, I want to understand management's point of view, but I don't want to learn it from management. I want the union to explain it to mm, me. Mm. And then we'd, you know, we'd have to go back and forth and then we'd reverse the role. And I wouldn't let them move on to the next stage of the process of looking for solutions until both sides could articulate the position of the other side to the other side's satisfaction. You know, my, my husband and I, um, I am a certified mediator. So I used to mediate ah. um, business disputes in the King County courts. And um, one of the formulas that they use is you figure out like, so what's the fundamental issue? We're trying to resolve, you know, a thousand dollar deposit I made on whatever. Okay, so yeah. that may be the thing. So we're trying to solve this particular problem. And, you know, the, and it's like, and I feel like, this person was really rude to me and I want an apology. Like that would be maybe a second. Like, so everyone wants yeah. to feel better about the relationship that you guys have. So you neutralize everything and you talk about like what the, and you literally, you, one person has to hear exactly when, so I took the same model with my husband. And whenever we get into an argument, I'll say, this can take 20 minutes, five to 20 minutes or two hours. What do you want? <laughs> if you want us to spend five to 20 minutes, which I dearly want, then I'm going to have you repeat what I just said. Yeah. And then I will repeat what you just said. And then we'll ask questions. And then we will figure out what the solution is. But if you want to get into a fight, we, <laughs> we can do what we're doing right now. It's yeah. not going to work. And I swear, <laughs> we've been married for almost 25 years. And once I got trained as a mediator, the number yeah. of disputes and having this formula that you just talked about it makes a huge difference because yeah. you're list, it's the things that you're saying that don't happen. You're, def you're not defensive and you're, you may be defensive, but you're still listening yeah. and you're repeating back and you're confirming understanding and proving to the person I've heard you. Did I understand? Now I'm going to present my position now. How? So I think that these are the problems we're trying to solve. Let's try to solve them together. And when you yeah. both understand it, just, it's so much better in problem solving. Well, and, and you, you get a better sense of what's really important. Exactly. I mean, I, I've mediated almost a couple thousand labor disputes. Yeah. And a huge number of those could have been settled by a simple apology <laughs> if it was sincere. You know? Every single one I've ever, I've done much fewer than you, but it's like, if you just apologize, <laughs> this That's whole right. thing would be over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're saying, I'll apologize when hell freezes over, you know? Well, yeah. that's all right. It's not about the thousand dollars, is it? <laughs> exactly. It's never about a thousand dollars. It's always about being understood, being um, attuned to, you know, being yeah. heard. It's being emotionally attuned to, understood, feeling safe. If you got those three things, like if which is significant competence and likability. Exactly. If you help that other person feel that way. Believe me, it'll make a difference. Exactly. You'll be done. Yeah. Save all that, save all that money paying lawyers, just give them confidence that you like them, that, you know, whatever, what are the other two that you like they're, them? That... They're, they're significant. They're, yeah. In other words, they're important and they're competent. You yeah. Know, you'll listen to their ideas. You take yeah. them seriously. Yeah. You know? This is just. And don't treat so... them like dirt, you know. <laughs>
<laughs> Seems like simple things, but at the time when you're triggered, when you're like dealing with some childhood issue that is somehow cropped up here and you're kind of all things are lighting up in your brain or actually probably in the lower part of your brain, <laughs> none yeah. of these things work. Well, this has been a joy and I, and, I, um, and I hope that people can learn from these things and try them out. It really does work. Ask my husband. Um, <laughs> We've been talking and my to my wife. Yeah, yeah exactly. We've been talking to Jim, to him about his book, Radical Collaboration: Five Essential Skills to Overcome Defensiveness and Build Successful Relationships. This is the second edition, so it has the most current wisdom of how to do this today. Um, thank you so I much. Really this is really delightful. It was a lot of fun for me. All right, so. thank you. <laughs> uh -huh.